uh, 1 Kings 17 and 1 Kings 18. And in this series, I want to preach about when your rivers run dry. So I want to preach a series on when your rivers run dry. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse number 1. If you have it, say, I've got it. It should be on the screens in front of you. And we find these words. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. And then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. And so he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Would you look at somebody before you take your seat? I want you to smile at them, give them tell them, neighbor, neighbor. you're being tested. Being tested. Amen. amen, amen. You can have your seat in the presence of God. I want to preach this first Sunday on the subject, I'm being tested. Let's see if we have similar experiences. Have you ever felt like God led you somewhere only to be disappointed how things turned out when you got there? I've often found myself perplexed that why does the God who makes the rain fall and the God that makes the rivers flow sometimes let those same rivers run dry? I want to give you permission to not be perfect. That should help somebody. Y'all, I don't care how saved you are. All of us are going to have seasons in life when our faith fluctuates. Come on, y'all. Some days I'm hot. Some days I'm cold. Some days I'm excited. Some days I'm ready to walk away. Come on. If you know I'm talking right, say amen. There's going to be moments in our Christian walk where our wonder of God wavers, where our determination diminishes. And the reason is because even though we are used by God, we are not God. And even though you have times of powerful anointing, you are not the anointed one. Preach Pastor Gail here. That we're going to have moments in our life where we fall back. Everybody say fall back. Where we fall back into our humanness. Where we fall back into our humanity. But yet God will show up refreshing us in our moments of exhaustion. Has God ever refreshed you in a moment of exhaustion? When everything seems dark, it seems like at those moments, the light of Christ begins to break through the storm clouds of our life and joy comes in the morning. Let me set this up. Elijah is a study in contrast. He has powerful demonstrations of God's provision and yet still has moments when he wavers. Get the contrast. This is a man who can pray down fire. This is a man who can outrun a king's chariot. This is a man who could command power over life and death. But then this is the same man that winds up running for his life and going from speaking loud to whimpering when Jezebel is ready to kill him. This is the same man. Everybody say the same man. 
This is the same man that even though God has used him powerfully, suddenly his voice begins to crack. And that same God that used him powerfully starts to fall under and sit under a broom tree in the middle of a desert in his moment of loneliness and desperation and timidity. This great man of God and wants to take his life. Why are you saying this, Pastor? Because you and I are going to have moments of timidity. Moments when things are not right. Moment when things are not the best. And it doesn't mean you're not saved. It doesn't mean you're not anointed. It doesn't mean that God is not for you. It means you are not God. Can, I, I, I got to put it right where folk can get it. You get mad because you ain't God. You want to get back sometimes because you're not God. You don't always have every answer because you're not God. And we've got to learn to stop making people feel guilty because they are human. I have moments of desperation and moments of frustration. So excuse me. Yes, I'm going to be depressed sometimes. Yes, I'm going to question God sometimes. It doesn't mean I'm not saved. It doesn't mean I'm not going to heaven. It doesn't mean God is not for me. It means when you cut me, I bleed. And we forget that just because folk are saved doesn't mean they can take all that. Can I, can I park right here for a moment? You can't keep beating folk up. Damaging folk. Talking about folk. Criticizing folk. Making folk's life hard and not expect that at some point there won't be evidence of humanity. We find, let me set them up because I'm going to be here with them for four weeks. We find Elijah in his humanity. We find him experiencing depression. We'll find him in loneliness. We will even find him where he will question his call, question his work, Question his effectiveness. There is probably not a month that goes by when I don't sit and scratch my head about God. Am I really as effective as you need me to be? Matter of fact, I would argue if you don't have moments of questioning God, I don't even know how saved you might really be. Because the reality of it is we're going to all have those moments when like, God, I'm trying to figure this thing out. And I need you to see this. He is a giant minister be of a man this is a man that is a giant of a man please grab this and be blessed but doesn't have everything in order he's going to become depressed and he's going to become lonely and yet still used by God can we stop looking for perfect people to be the ones that are used by God because you do know if God is going to use somebody, it's going to have to be an imperfect somebody because the only perfect somebody was Jesus and all of the rest of us has flaws and issues. The question before us is this. How could Elijah be used of God to defeat the prophets of Baal and then still run for his life from Jezebel? Why didn't Elijah know that the God who destroyed the false prophets could also destroy this queen? And as God is setting him up to deal with his life when the rivers run dry, he gives him and he gives us four tests. And I would submit to us today that as we all go through our moments of difficulty and hardship, what I want you to hold on to is God is testing me. Let me put it so you can get it. He hasn't walked away from you. He hasn't taken his hand off of you. He hasn't forgotten you. He's just simply putting me through a test so he can use me in a greater way. And so, so let me quickly give you the four tests in these first seven verses. Because remember, I'm being tested. Well, if I'm being tested, what exactly is being tested? Glad y'all asked. The first thing that's being tested is the test of dependence. Everybody say dependence. 
Family, before God can use us, he needs to know he can depend on us. God needs to be convinced he can trust us. Notice how the opening verses of chapter 17, verse number one opens up. And Elijah the Tishbite and the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand. He's speaking this over prophets of Baal. He's pre teaching this and speaking this over kings that don't believe in his God. He says, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand. He's standing before a, a, a wicked king. But he's saying in front of that wicked king, John, I'm not standing in front of Ahab. I'm standing before God. And God needs to know that despite God, it's going to be good. He needs to know despite who your audience is, you're not going to change your mind about your commitment to who you serve. I'm not going to be one way in the sanctuary on Sunday and a different way when I get to work on Monday. I'm not going to be one way at Bible study on Tuesday and a different way when I get hanging out on Friday. I'm going to let everybody know. I'm st I might be looking at you, but I'm standing before God. And I think we live in a culture, y'all, where sometimes we would rather make friends with the world. The culture gonna change. Let me talk to the middle of the room. I say the culture gonna change. But God is never going to change. And I'm going to make up in my mind, I don't care who is in the White House, who is in City Hall, who's on City Council, who's on County Commission, who's the CEO of the company. At the end of the day, I still got to give an account to God. And I need to let God know that he can depend on me. Tell your neighbor, a constant witness. He, he has to know that he, can, he gives us all the tests of a constant witness. He, the, the, his boldness comes from a living God. Oh, I feel this. Elijah's boldness is because he has a relationship. We're about to have communion in a minute. His, his boldness comes because of his communion with God. Yo, I want you to get this. Get this. No miracles yet. We read this. Elijah hasn't performed any miracles yet. When we read this, Elijah hasn't done anything significant yet. When we read this, uh, Elijah hasn't made a name for himself yet. As for all accounts, he's really a nobody standing in front of a king. But this nobody standing in front of a king, God gives him the test of dependence and says, can you, oh God, can you stand in front of authority and let them know who your God is? Can you stand in front of people of power and speak truth to that power and says, you may not believe in a God I believe in, but I'm not going to let you make me change my mind about the God I serve. I would rather be out with you and in with God than in with you and out with God. And God is going to test my dependence of our constant witness. You, you, you got to grab this. You got to grab this. This is an agricultural society. This is, this is a society of farmers. This is a society of people that without rain, everybody goes broke. This is a society of people, y'all, that when he makes this pronouncement about no rain, he's literally saying the whole economy is about to go into depression. He's literally saying everybody who has is about to lose which is my second point I want to raise about this test of dependence. Because the test of dependence that God gives all of us is not just a dependence of, of a constant witness, but God, y'all, gives me the test of dependence on whether or not I'm willing to speak a hard word. I got a handful of amens, but I should deserve more than that. Y'all, a whole bunch of us are so concerned with not hurting nobody's feelings <laughs> that we, not, we can't be trusted with a hard word. Preach Pastor Gallia. I'm so busy trying to keep the peace Z that I never realized that the peace is at the stake of my own emotions. Can I remind you that if you're trying to keep the peace and the only one at peace is everybody else and you don't have no peace because you're scared of saying how you really feel, then there ain't really no peace. God got to be able to trust you with a hard word. 
And I think one of the challenges of Christianity is Yolanda, we get in environments that when we get a hard word, we leave to go to a place with an easy word. But sometimes God has to be willing to look in our face and say, you may not want to hear this, but it's exactly what you need to hear. It may not be what you want to comply with, but it's exactly what you need to hear. It's not easy words that make kids graduate from high school and college. It's the hard word of discipline and hard work. It's the, anybody here other than me know I'm here because I had a handful of people that loved me enough to tell me what I needed to hear. And God blessed me with a willingness to be able to abide by what they said. Can, can I preach this? I'm, I'm out the gate, y'all. I might as well. I, 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 y'all, y'all, y'all. We live in a culture that when somebody give us a hard word, we claim foul. The cultural response to a hard word is church hurt. Many, and I'm not suggesting there aren't moments when church hurt is real. But I am suggesting that there's a bunch of times all you got was a hard word. Can God depend on you, preachers, to stand in the pulpit and speak a hard word when won't nobody say amen? God got enough people that'll speak name it and claim it. He got enough people that'll speak blab it and grab it. He got enough people to tell him, jump up and spin around three times and say, I'll get my miracle. But he needs some folk that'll stand up in front of the crowd and say, holiness is still right. And if I don't live the way God has called me to live. Some of us need to talk about the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life. We got enough folk giving us cotton candy. We need a hard word, a word that's going to rescue a marriage, a word that's going to rescue my life, a word that's going to fix my dilemma, a word that's going to turn my life around. You need somebody to give you a hard word. You don't need friends that looking at you gain 50 pounds and you ain't, they ain't said nothing to you. You need a hard word. Baby, we going out to eat, but you got to get a salad. And it's not because I'm judging you. It's because I love you too much to keep seeing you kill yourself. And you got enough so-called friends that'll give you an easy word. I need some friends to give me a hard word. The first test he gives us is the test of dependence. The test of whether or not he can depend us with a constant witness. And whether or not he can depend that we will give a hard word. And for those of us in this room, he needs to know you can be trusted to get a hard word and not leave a hard word. See, the dilemma that Elijah is in is that he has not yet gotten to a point when he can trust God as much as he needs to. And he doesn't recognize it, but just like Elijah, we are in a place where God has us in a season of preparation for what he's about to do. Can I give this to somebody? Sometimes you going through all the disappointment and the hardship is because God has you in a season of preparation. And so don't take your hand off the wheel and don't take your hand off the plow and don't think that God doesn't love you. God has you in it because he's preparing you for what he's about to do next in your life. So God begins to shape Elijah and teach him some things. It's like God is saying, I want to do more with you, but because I want to do more with you, you got to go through more. Good Lord. Can I go ahead and answer the question you've been asking? Lord, how come I got to go through this? How come this has been my journey? How come this has been my experience? How come 
come this has been my story? Can I give you the answer from God? Because I needed to trust you with more than I'm about to do in your life. If I didn't want to do something great in your life, I would have made it easy for you. But I got it hard for you because I got a plan for your life. And I got an anointing on your life. And I got a calling on your life. And because I got something on your life, you're going to go through some moments of limping. And some moments of hardship. And some moments of setback. But hang in there because I got a plan for you. Can I tell you why some of us can't say amen, Trishonda? Because most of us want God to use us greatly without breaking us greatly. But the only way I reign with him is to suffer with him. And the more I suffer with him, the greater I reign with him. Tell everybody, everybody shout, I'm being tested. I, I'm being tested for my dependence. Let me, let me hurry up, y'all. I got, I, got, I got 10 minutes. But not only am I being tested by my dependents, secondly, verses two and three, I'm being tested. It's the test of departure. In verses two and three, he, he, he says the word of the Lord came to him. Get away from here. <laughs> See, and I need y'all to get this. Turn east. I need y'all to get this. And hide. Can God trust you to leave and go do nothing? The Lord gives him the test of departure. The question you might ask is, well, couldn't God save him right where he was? But God says, no, I need to test you. And I need to know if you're willing to go somewhere and not be known. Are, are, are you willing to go somewhere and stop talking? Y'all, y'all, it went right over your head. He a prophet. Y'all missed it. His calling is to talk. Are you willing to go somewhere, Ryan, and not play? Are you willing to go somewhere and not sing? Are you willing to go somewhere and not lead? It's quiet in the room. Are you willing to go somewhere and not comment? Are you willing to go somewhere and not post? Are you willing to go somewhere and not cosign? Are you willing to just go hide? Y'all, God has us in moments of our life where he will put us in seasons of hiding. Job 23, he says, when God has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Job understood that I might lose my family and my wealth and my joy, but he understood that at the end of this, God was setting me up for something greater. Yeah, we have to stand on the truth today that whatever drought we are walking through, this is going to make somebody shout. Watch this, Minister Edge. Whatever drought you are walking through, God will hide you today so you can be of use tomorrow. God says, I got such a plan for you. I need you to get out of harm's way. Y'all, I'm learning, y'all, that your hiding moment will strengthen you to lead tomorrow. That God is letting Elijah know that there are some miracles that are coming. But I got to hide you today. It's the, it's the test of departure. The, y'all, the prophet has got to be willing to take a lonely path of Cherith. To dwell in Zarephath. Please get this. Before he stands in Mount Carmel. Some of y'all are not Bible readers enough to understand that. See, most of us only see folk slaying in Mount Carmel. But we did not witness their loneliness by the brook when nobody was calling their name. 
Do I have a handful of people in church where folks see what you're walking in now, but they don't know the seasons of desperation and the seasons of loneliness and the seasons of hiding and the seasons of sacrificing and the seasons of putting my priorities on the back burner just so I can get to where God has me. Look at somebody tell them, I didn't just get here. Come on, this path was paved by a path of loneliness. I had to leave some places that I didn't want to leave. I had to leave some folk I didn't want to leave. I had to go another journey that I didn't want to go. But I'm glad I did it because God has me in a better place. See, this is what I want to encourage somebody about during Mental Health Awareness Month. Yeah, yeah, and I needed to get this. If, if, if I am confounded about the will of God today, it may be a result of not having obeyed his will yesterday. Prophet, go be by yourself and don't talk. I need to know I can trust you, oh Jesus, alone by the brook. And if I can trust you by alone by the brook, then I'm convinced I can trust you when you get to Mount Carmel. But a lot of us have not shown God that he can trust me with a little bit. And if God can't trust you with a little bit, how in the world? Let me preach, y'all. If he can't trust you with a dollar, how are you going to give you a hundred? If he can't trust you with a little, if he can't trust me with a 400 square foot efficiency apartment, how in the world are he going to trust me with a whole house? If he can't trust me with a little, he will never bless me with much. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Six minutes. It's the test of dependence. The test of departure. But here's the third thing. It's the test of diet. And it will be, verse 4, that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Hey, y'all, y'all, look at that, that, that verse there. <laughs> y'all, y'all, he says, Elijah, if you choose another spot, I can't help you. Some of y'all need to come with me, help somebody get here. It, see, we will starve if we go to where we want to go. He says, I want you to go there. I'm only sending the supply to one place. Preach Pastor Gail here. Y- y- he said, I'm only sending supplies and resources one place. And I need you to go there. Because when you get there... There's going to be some ravens to feed you. Now, now, can I get y'all, can y'all, are y'all ready to shout? He said, he speaks drought where he is. Which means if he stays there, he winds up in drought like everybody else. We're my folk from Pine Tops and Princeville. Because when we get rained out here, that water flows there. So he says to his prophet, I want you to go to the brook, which means it's going to stop raining here. But when you get down shore, there's going to be some water in the brook for you. So I'm going to sustain you in your moment, but I'm going to send the ravens to feed you there. Can I help somebody? You can't eat anywhere. Two, three, four, five, six. Six, six. I'm going to say it again. I said you can't eat anywhere. You can't eat everybody full of food. Some folk got nasty kitchens. Some folk don't know how to cook the meal. Some folk got bad habits. You can't eat everywhere. You don't invite everybody to come cook. Y'all shouting, but you may not be shouting after that. That's why you got to be careful every time you clicking on somebody's YouTube and you clicking on somebody's reel. You can't eat everywhere. You can't eat where they talking about Jesus is a stripper. Take your neighbor, you can't eat everywhere. 
you got to eat in a place where God has sent you. And God ain't sending you all over social media. And he ain't sending you all over the world. He ain't sending you all over TikTok. God, where do you want to feed me? And some of us are starving because we are running from where God sent the meal. I, I got it. I'm almost out of time. I, it, let me say something about this real fast. Real fast, real fast. So I got to be willing to adjust my appetite. Everybody say adjust my appetite. The, the raven brought him bread and meat in morning and bread and meat in evening. And then he drank from the brook. Can I bless somebody with this? Where God guides, he provides. Anybody here got a witness? That nobody didn't think I would make it, but God was the one that was guiding me there. And because God was guiding me there, God provided. I'm about to speak over somebody's life. Folk thought you were going to die in that place because it didn't look like a good place for you. But what they didn't know, it was what man that sent you there. It was God that sent you there. And if God sends you there, God is going to provide every meal you need. Not only will God provide where he guides, but God will supply where he sends. Whew. See, the issue for us, y'all got to give me, I got to finish this, y'all got to finish this. The challenge for us is I got to have faith to go. Let me say this real quick. It's time for you to put your yes on the table. Preach Pastor Gail here. Y'all, can, can we unpack it real quick? Ravens are dirty birds. Ravens are scavengers. This, this is strange. Because if ravens are true to their nature, then they're going to bring Elijah dead meat. Which means in order for him to live, the raven needs unspoiled meat. The last time I checked, only one somebody in the kingdom had that kind of meat. Ahab. Which means when God sends you somewhere, he will change the nature of something to go pick up what you need from your enemy and get you what you need in order to sustain you. Oh, God. So I believe God changed the nature of the raven. The raven flew over and grabbed the meat off of Ahab's table twice a day and took the meat and dropped it at the feet of the prophet so he can eat. I'm telling somebody, you better get ready that God is going to change somebody's nature in order to supply for you. Folk that can't stand you about to bless you. Folk that mean you ill is about to open up a door for you. God is changing a nature. Oh, God. <laughs> Folk that's been cussing you, they're going to start blessing you. Folk that wish you bad, they're going to be an agent of God to make sure that God gets you right where he needs you. Oh, God. I, but I got to be willing to adjust my appetite. Can I kind of go a little deeper real fast? I don't just need to adjust my appetite. I got to learn to accept the agent that God uses. <laughs> you go ahead and miss your blessing if you want. Some of us don't get a word because we don't like who the chosen one is to deliver the word. Preach Pastor Gary. 
But if they sing in the song, go ahead and receive it. If they play in the instrument, receive it. If they preach in the word, go ahead and receive it. We've got to get beyond our preferences and recognize it ain't got nothing to do with what agent I want. I need to have whoever God wants me. And if God is going to send a bird to give me what I need, then God, any way you want to bless me, I'll receive it. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. But, but I got to abandon my, abundant, my abundance because he says, good Lord, he says, he not going, the raven not going to drop off a week's supply. <laughs> he said, I'm, I'm not going to have him drop off on Sunday what you need till next week. He's going to deliver what you need. Some of y'all going to shout, Kara moment by moment oh god i feel a breakthrough in this room some of y'all worried about what god gonna do next week and you've forgotten that he got you all right right now and so god i don't exactly know what next month gonna look like what i do know is that i made it to sunday i can't really say what monday gonna look like but i know you've been blessing me somebody shout moment by moment I don't know if I'm gonna feel strong enough today tomorrow what I do know is I feel strong enough today is there anybody in the room that's grateful that God is providing for you moment by mo moment by moment new mercy I see day by day great is your faithfulness God I don't know about my marriage tomorrow but I know we are right today I don't know about my children next week but I know they got their right mind today can we take a moment and give God praise that he's been taking care of me moment by I may feel weak tomorrow but today I got strength he's taking care of me moment by moment I may not have friends tomorrow but I thank God for my friends today he's taking care of me moment by moment Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Is there anybody in church that can testify God been taking care of me day by day, moment by moment? God has been opening doors. God has been making ways. God has been paving paths, moment by moment. I'm trying to bless somebody. Pastor, what you gonna do in six months? I don't know what I'm going to do in six months. I do know this. He taking care of me today. He gave me what I needed today. He got my mind right today. And I'm going to thank God for feeding me moment by moment. Come on, I'm almost out of time. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Tell somebody he almost done. He almost done. <laughs> now watch this. You've been shouting that he been meeting your need moment by moment and day by day that the raven been coming twice a day and then he's lapped down and taking water from the brook and then after these days provided upstream the water stopped running every day he started lapping in the water cupping his hand in the brook And he noticed day by day that the water was getting lower and lower. It was a time he could just lap up right an inch, 12 inches high, grab up. But now his face is further and further in the water. And he's, he's looking upstream. And one day the river runs dry. After all of this providing, day by day, my river runs dry. After 53 years of marriage, my river runs dry. After carrying that baby for nine months, my river runs dry. After taking care of people and doing the best for them, my river runs dry. After giving everything to that job for 15 years, my river runs dry. As providing for my child and putting them through school, I have to visit them now in prison. 
my river runs dry. And if we keep living, that same God we shout about who's been providing, one day the river runs dry. And when the river runs dry, it's your last test. Come back next week, I'm going to give you this test. But when your river runs dry, it's your last test. And the last test that God puts you through is the test of depletion. Can he trust you with nothing? The same way he trusted you with something. Can he trust you with lack? The same way he trusts you with something. Can he trust you being sick? The same way he trusted when I had health in my body. Can he trust me when I'm out of money? The same way he could when I had plenty of money. Can he trust me when I'm angry and disappointed and losing? The brook dries up. Let me close my Bible. I want you to get this because God never instructed Elijah to speak about rain. He spoke, told him to speak about drought. And because God keeps his word, the river runs dry. And when the brook runs dry and when the river runs dry, this is what God was saying to him. The only way I could get you to leave the brook is to make sure there was nothing left there for you. I want somebody to get this in your spirit. Sometimes it's comfort that keeps us from calling. Preach pastor. Sometimes my comfort keeps me from saying yes. Sometimes we don't want to move, so God moves us in our uncomfort. If David did not go through Goliath, he would have never been king. If Joseph had not gone through a pit, he would have never ended up in Egypt. If the Israelites did not go through the wilderness, he would have never, they would have missed out on the promised land. I need you to get this. This is a test. I'm, my, my final statement. It's a test of dependence. It's a test of departure. It's a test of diet. It's a test of depletion. It's crazy how God will use something in your life where you thought was terrible. I'm done when I say this. If, for those who get this in the spirit, it's a thing that's leading to a thing. Some of y'all catch This dry place is a thing that's leading to a thing. Y'all don't believe me. I'm gonna preach next Sunday, but the next verse, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, arise and go to Zarephath. This drought was a thing leading to a thing. Folk lying on you is a thing that's leading to a thing. Getting that pink slip is a thing. Some of you would have never started the business you started had you not gotten let off of that job. Some of you had never gone back to school had you not lost a job. It's a thing that leads to a thing. So family, let your drought speak to you, not defeat you. Let your drought develop you. Let your drought motivate you. The same God who gives water can take away water. Amen. Say amen if you can. Amen. And when that happens, God is saying, I did it because you on your own didn't have the guts to take the next step. Whatever you're going through, it's a test. Everybody say it's a test. It's a test.